If you've ever followed a forum on the best place to position a life raft on a boat, you'll uh, understand that it's a very contentious issue. But I think one thing we can all agree on is uh, the place not to put a life raft is the bottom of a locker, which is where our valet's life raft was um, when we first bought the boat. The thing with life rafts is they're probably the most expensive piece of equipment that you will never ever use. Um, but with having three kids on board and uh, a wife who was a former RNLI crew member, obviously uh, safety is a priority on board. So uh, that was something we weren't willing to compromise on. But we were lucky enough to come across a charter company who, who had over-ordered on some life rafts and they just so happened to have a Viking eight-man offshore life raft, which was exactly what we wanted. The only problem was it was a canister life raft and we didn't have any mounts on board. We've seen some fantastic quick release mechanisms for mounting uh, canister life rafts on the transom. The problem is we already had the dinghy, the, out, the two outboards and the solar arch on there. The weight of a life raft is quite substantial so we wanted to balance the weight out across the boat to keep the trim nice, nice and straight. So we figured the best place to do it was midships um, because it's easy access. Um, it's the highest point of the boat. I guess the next question was really how are we going to mount it midships because there was no mounting platform there, there was nowhere to mount it um, and there was no obvious attachment points. Like most people I, I don't like using self-tapping screws in the deck anyway um, so basically we had to get underneath and work out how to attach a backing plate so we could through bolt it onto the deck. So having ripped the headlining down, um, I still couldn't find my way into the cavity. So there was only one thing for it really, and that was to cut a big hole in the ply. Never a comfortable DIY moment for any boat owner, but uh, it had to be done. I still wasn't entirely sure what was in the cavity. I mean, there could have been conduits there, could have been filled with foam or balsa. I just had no idea. Um, so it was a bit of a leap of faith. Um, based on nothing more than intuition. So inevitably, when you're on dock and you're making some DIY noises, um, it attracts the neighbors. And our good friend, Peter Babbage from Sacre Bleu came round to uh, see what we're up to and to lend a hand. Peter and Anne were long-term cruisers and uh, they gave us no end of really good, useful tips and advice when we were, when we were neighbors in Lefkas. That's what I love about the Liverboard community. Everybody's got such a can-do attitude and is willing to help out with advice or practical help. It's like the good old days, uh, if those days ever really existed, I don't know. But as it turned out, it was a cavity space. Uh, which was just what I was hoping to find because then I could get the backing plate up underneath the fiberglass deck to get a really good grip on that mount. What are you doing with D? The mount to put the cradle on for the life raft. How big's the life raft? It's a deck mounted Viking. Eight man life raft. Another thing I learned uh, quite early on in the uh, boat maintenance game was um, if you've got kids living on board, you really have to keep them briefed in what you're doing because their unrelenting curiosity means you get constantly bombarded with questions every time you're trying to do a job. So I've worked out the best way to, uh, to satisfy that curiosity is really to, to talk them through the job in the first place so they know the, exactly what you're doing. And recess them in the wood, okay, so it lies flat on the deck. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put some bolts through here to match up with those ones there. So initially, I was going to fiberglass the cutout back in place, but then I thought that was going to restrict my access to the back in plate again if I ever needed to in the future. So instead, what I did was uh, glue tabs on each corner and screwed the cutout back in place 
So that gave a nice clean surface to reinstate the headliner afterwards. All right, five, five minutes. And then finally, glue the headlining back in place with some lino glue, which I'd used before in jobs when making wet rooms, where I used to glue uh, linoleum onto wet room ceilings. Obviously the biggest challenge uh, with gluing anything to a ceiling is getting enough pressure behind it while the glue sets. But when you're living on a boat you realise that no problem is unsurmountable and you have to find a way around it. So uh, luckily I had a length of ply which was thin enough to bend and then put pressure on the ceiling. And then finally it was just a matter of fixing the battens back in place. So the life raft's in place, we through bolted it through the outer skin and now just putting everything back. So obviously it helps having a supportive wife who uh, trusts your judgement in this sort of things. You're very practical aren't you? Mostly. I think we need to put more coats on this though. So that would give a nice clean surface to reinstate the the. So that would give a nice clean surface. Ha! <laughs> the thing about having the life raft. So thanks for watching, please give us a thumbs up, a like, uh, click on the notification bell and subscribe. Thanks to our patrons who support us in everything we do, uh, from the production costs to advice. If you'd like to become a patron and share on our journey on a more personal level, it's very easy. Just click on the link in the description on any of the videos and that'll take you to the Patreon website where you just follow the instructions. Thanks for watching. <laughs>